So, so I would like to say just a few words. Um, today we have the first uh, uh, colloquium of CIFs of the year 2023. Uh, so the program is going to start one month later because of many problems we had before. And uh, it is a great pleasure to have uh, to attend the seminar that uh, Pasquale Calabrese will give uh, this afternoon about the quantum Bempa effect. Pasquale is a very renowned scientist. Uh, he is a full professor of theoretical physics of theoretical physics at CISA in Trieste, and he is certainly one of the main international experts of thermodynamic properties of low-dimensional quantum systems, both in equilibrium and outer equilibrium conditions. And he is studies uh, he studied in Pisa, where he got his master in his, his PhD degree, and he has significantly significantly contributed to various topics in statistical field theory and in more recent problems concerning measurements in entanglement in, this, or in quantum and in the extended systems. So uh, it's really a great pleasure. Let me just recall you that uh, we next. Uh, uh, seminar will be given on the 23rd of this month by Bernard Derrida from the Colombal uh, Superior in Paris, and it will be soon announced on our um, web page. So please, Pasquale, it's your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberto, for the kind introduction, and thank you to the Junta of Seeds for inviting me to give a colloquium, which we make in this experimental form, uh, which is hybrid with the uh, uh, done in sea science stream uh, to zoom all over the, the world to require the, to the interested people. Okay, the, what I will discuss is this new phenomenon that we discovered that we call the quantum band effect. And uh, the work has been done mainly in collaboration with Filiberto Ares and Sara Murciano, uh, that were in CISA at the time of uh, uh, when the work started. And in the time, many people joined the uh, our enterprise, as you will see by looking at the slide. Okay, so what is the Bemba effect? Okay, the first thing is the classical Bemba effect. It's a very strange thing that it's not, uh, oops, it's not much known, is that is the phenomenon that hot water can freeze faster than cold water. Okay, and this is a completely paradoxical effect because of the uh, equilibrium intuition that we have, as we will discuss uh, soon. But actually, it seems it was known since a long time. In fact, already Aristotle in Meteorologica was writing that to cool the hot water, quickly begin by putting it in the sun. Okay? But although it seems it was known to us in Greek, the phenomenon was completely uh, overlooked and forgot for many years. Until in the 60s, it was rediscovered by Ben by Oswald. Uh, and it's a quite nice, uh, the story is quite nice anecdote that is completed in, the, in their paper of uh, the 60s, which is worth to recalling. Ben was uh, uh, an African kid at the time, just uh, around 15 years old, that liked to prepare the ice cream. While uh, preparing ice cream, he was following the receipts that was just to take the ice cream, uh, boil the milk, boil uh, with uh, the flavor, then uh, wait to bring the boiled uh, uh, milk and flavor to room temperature. Only when it's at room temperature, put in the freezer in such a way to uh, cool it down to the right temperature. But Mbemba was in an hurry. And so wanted to prepare the ice cream very quickly and put the, uh, this cold, the cold mixture of milk and flavor immediately in the freezer when it was still very hot. Okay? And we discovered, it was surprise, he discovered that uh, uh, the, this ice cream was ready before other one that were put inside the freezer that they waited for the room temperature as uh, usual. So I was very surprised by this effect. He went to school, asked to his math physics professor, uh, do you know why if I put the ice cream uh, hot in the freezer, it uh, cools down before the, the warm one, the one at room temperature? And uh, 
the professor starts joking with him, this is not physics, this is Benda physics. And by the way, nowadays, this phenomenon is known as Benda physics. Uh, but OK, so uh, everyone was uh, joking with him that he was uh, just not uh, going against thermodynamic principle. And in fact, in, in some way, he was going against thermodynamic principle that this could not be possible. But at some point, a uh, physicist from the university in Dar es Salaam visited this village to uh, spread some uh, uh, spread the knowledge of physics, and Bemba, still very stubborn, asked even him, uh, sorry, Professor Osborne, uh, do you know why, uh, if I put the yes ice in this way, it happens? Osborne, I, Osborne answered him very skeptically, saying, I don't think it's possible, but I will make the experiment now that I go back to my uh, lab. Okay? He went back to the lab, made the experiment, and then contacted Bemba to say, you are right. Okay, and they wrote this paper, this famous paper in the in the sixties, where they were you can find plots like this one, okay, where you see that if you what they do, you put water at here it's at like uh, forty two degrees and water at eighteen degrees in the freezer, okay, and you measure the temperature, whatever it means because it's an out of equilibrium phenomenon. You put a, a thermometer there and you read what it says. It, say, uh, it says you, but this is not really a well-defined concept. Okay, so you measure the temperature and you see that uh, uh, the, the, the hot water uh, cools much faster and at some point surpasses the uh, room temperature water and it uh, reached the equilibrium before the room, the, the room temperature of water. This is very strange, okay? And in fact, uh, it recently became a very popular uh, subject that has been covered by, uh, because of its strangeness by many, uh, where is the pointer? By the press, uh, in, uh, by the standard press, you see an article on the Italian Post or an article on other, uh, uh, pre journals, just because it's very easy to explain to everybody, and it's also very clear why it's, uh, it's strange. First of all, let me to put everyone on the same page. Let's recapitulate why Bemba effect is crazy and why everyone was saying Bemba that he was uh, making Bemba physics and strange things. Okay, because of our equilibrium intuition. Okay, we always think in terms of thermodynamic by that system stays very close to equilibrium, and when it cools down, it passes through equilibrium state. If this would be the case, okay, to cool down something that is at higher temperature, I should pass through the equilibrium state at lower temperature, and so I could never overpass the, the uh, I could never overpass the the, uh, the cooler. Uh, uh, system okay so by equilibrium so for us which means that for a slow cooling not by putting in the freezer that will make a quench in the temperature uh enough object must thermalize before uh, after a colder one okay so band effect is completely uh, impossible by equilibrium physics and so okay one thing that is should be very clear and we should have very, very, uh, very much in mind is that band effect must be a genuine non equilibrium phenomenon. Okay? So, non equilibrium physics should be used to explain band effect. Equilibrium physics will not be sufficient to explain what is going on. And since we are used to thermodynamics, to quasi static uh, uh, transformation, and all these things that we learn, uh, not even at university, but at high school, okay, since we have all this uh, thermodynamic in mind, we cannot sort of uh, accept the BEMB effect. But when we think that we are out of equilibrium, um, new uh, doors open, and actually BEMB effect becomes possible. As I was saying, uh, the, all these experiments making the, uh, measuring the temperature, that there are many, and you can just open the web and uh, see many plots like uh, the one that I showed here. Okay? Like this one, you can if you write in Bemba effect in Google, you will find many of these kinds of plots. But all these plots and experiments are 
flowed by the fact that uh, temperature is not defined at of equilibrium. So this is actually not uh, a proper uh, uh, a proper experiment. And okay, it's it has some very high conceptual problems. What people did? Okay, first of all, uh, uh, it is nowadays clear that uh, member effect is not much related to the phase transition of the water, but it's just a phenomenon that, uh, as is written here, all systems cool faster. Okay, and this is shown in, the, in several calculations and experiments. One experiment that I really like is this one published in 2020 in uh, Nature, by Kumar and uh, Beckhofer. Okay, so uh, what they do is that they use a colloidal system, okay, which is some, a setting that is very much controllable, okay? And what they can do by uh, following the motion of the colloidal particle into the system, they can reconstruct the state of the system. They know the speed and uh, the position and the velocity of all the colloidal particles. Okay, because uh, this is a new system, there are not so many other particles, they can measure all these particles, and they can define a distance between the state, the non-equilibrium state at any time, and the equilibrium state to which you should tend, which means the thermal ensemble at some temperature. Okay, so this quantity is well defined even out of equilibrium. It's not a, a, a strange temperature that we don't know what it is. And by measuring this quantity, these are the results of the experiment, okay, of one experiment, for example, that you prepare uh, the hot, let's say they have two samples that they call hot colloidal particle and warm colloidal particle, and they have to cool down to the cold air, which is at this temperature. And what they show is that uh, the distance between the equilibrium state it's reached, uh, you see that the OP system starts from more distant from the equilibrium, but at some time it overpasses the warm uh, system and thermalizes before the warm one. Okay, as you see, this is this uh, black car here is just a, a, a system prepared at equilibrium to check the, the amplitude of the fluctuation. Okay, just to check that everything is. Under control, and the, the fluctuation of the cool system is the same as the equilibrium one, so everything is completely under control. Okay, so this the band effect is signaled by the crossing of these two curves. So keep this in mind because by similar crossing, we will define a quantum band effect later on. Okay, so the fact that the odd system overpassed the warm one and thermalized before the warm one is the band effect. And this is a very clear signature of the band effect. Obviously, in this experiment, they didn't make only one measure, but they made many measurements depending on uh, different uh, temperature and varying some parameter of the experiment that I'm not even, it's not even worth to recall uh, exactly what they are, okay? But as you see, in many cases, there is this crossing, signaling uh, here there is a crossing, here there is a crossing, here there is a crossing, which signals the band effect. But sometimes, like in this case here, there is no crossing of the car, signaling that there is no band effect, the things goes like in equilibrium, okay? So band effect is not a universal phenomenon because it will be very strange. It's not that every time that we cool something, we will observe a reverse uh, behavior, but okay, many times, we have this effect. And okay, I, despite I'm not really an expert of the classical depth effect, from what uh, I read, I can say that it's still not completely clear under uh, uh, what condition you have band effect and if you can predict a priori without making calculation or experiment, if there is band effect or not. Okay, so this is the situation of what is the band effect. But as you know, I'm interested mainly in quantum mechanics. So what about quantum system? And okay, quantum system, you can make many things. The setting that I have in mind is that of a quantum quench in which we start from a nine, we have an isolated quantum system at zero temperature, okay? So uh, there is no temperature at all in this game. Just that this system is prepared in a non-equilibrium pure state, okay? 
Now, such a system is known from several studies to which I, I also contributed a new system, in particular that people have contributed here a lot. Such system relaxed locally to a Gibbs ensemble if the system is chaotic or to a generalized Gibbs ensemble if the system is uh, integrable. Okay. What does it mean that relaxed locally? It means that the reduced density matrix of a subsystem okay, tends to the reduced density matrix or at equilibrium, okay, as written by this formula, in the sense that the limit for large time of the reduced density matrix of a finite subsystem is equal to the reduced density matrix of the Gibbs distribution, for example. Okay, in this sense, the system thermalizes. Okay, so if the relaxation in this system happens at the level of subsystem, it's clear that also defining in this quantum quench setting a quantum band by effect require a measure of uh, distance uh, from equilibrium, okay, like the one before, which is defined at the level of subsystem, okay? Because if we cannot talk about the food system, the food system will always be in some sense out of equilibrium and will never relax to anything, okay? What relaxes are subsystems. Okay, and to define this, in a nice way, we focus here on initial state that break a symmetry of the Hamiltonian. Okay, so we start from a state that break a symmetry, and such a symmetry will be eventually restored by time evolution because of Mergen Wagner type of argument. What I mean is that imagine you start with a state that break the symmetry. Since for large time, the symmetry should be, uh, the state is in a, the system is in a thermal ensemble. In a thermal ensemble in uh, low dimension, you cannot have smooth symmetry breaking by Mermin Wagner theorem. So, for large time, you cannot have smooth symmetry breaking, and this symmetry should be recovered. Okay? I hope this is clear to everyone. Please ask me questions at any time. Now, we want an experimentally measurable quantity that tell us how much a symmetry is broken at the level of a subsystem. And this leads us to the definition of this quantity, which we will, I will discuss soon, which we dub entanglement asymmetry, okay? Because it's, uh, it's a definition comes from what we know about the entanglement of many body quantum systems. Okay. Let's see. So let's focus on this low dimensional quantum system like a spin chain, okay, that uh, it's in a given state. Okay, let's first say, and there is a symmetry, uh, like a U1 symmetry, let's focus on simple symmetry, U1 symmetry, which are generated by a charge Q, for example, T to the rotation around some axis, okay, for example, uh, yeah, the Z axis, okay. Oh, why it moves up. So, no, what is going? Sorry, I apologize. I pressed the wrong button. So, if the state is symmetric, which means that the uh, density matrix commute with the charge, then also the reduced density matrix commute with the charge restricted to subsystem. This means that the reduced density matrix has a block diagonal form in which each block corresponds to the charge in that uh, uh, in the subsystem A. Okay, we what it means that while the total system has a fixed charge, for example, zero, like imagine a system with initial zero magnetization, a sub the magnetization in the subsystem can fluctuate. Okay, and the value that uh, can take uh, quantize obviously and uh, uh, this value here represents the value of the magnetization in each sector. Okay, so you can write the if the state is symmetric, you can write the reduced density matrix as direct sum of objects defined on each sector, and this leads to the concept of symmetry of the entanglement, which is uh, which would deserve a, a talk by itself, and but it's not what I will discuss today. What I'm going to discuss here is what happens if the symmetry is broken. Okay, if the symmetry is broken, this 
state does not commute with the charge anymore, and same is true at the level of the subsystem, which means that the reduced density metric is not anymore block diagonal, but there's out of the diagonal elements. Okay, so there are these elements. How this structure is useful to define? Uh, uh, so more stuff is outside this diagonal, more the symmetry is broken. Okay, that's the intuition. Let's see how we can define a quantity out of this. So this is our, our density matrix, okay, which is M full. Now we can take this density matrix and construct the density matrix where we erase all the out of diagonal elements, okay? Okay, so we destroy all these coherences out of the diagonal and we put it in a block diagonal. Okay, in formula, it just amounts to sum over the projector on the given charge sector. Okay, so the operation of eliminating get out of diagonal elements is just <coughs> this, uh, taking each block and uh, each piece and projecting on the on a given sector and then summing over all the projections so to recover all possible blocks. Okay, you understand this formula? I hope it's clear, okay? And now this leads to the main definition of this uh, uh, talk that is the entanglement asymmetry. The entanglement asymmetry is the difference of the von Neumann entropy of this density matrix minus the von Neumann entropy of the original density matrix, okay? The von Neumann entropy is defined here, as I call the what it is, it's just minus trace rho of growth. Why this is a good measure of how much the symmetry is broken? Because it's, uh, you can show mathematically that it's great larger than, uh, than zero, but this is, apart from mathematical, it's also physically very intuitive because, okay, you destroy some coherence here, so the entropy in this matrix should be larger than the entropy of this matrix. Okay, physically should be sound very natural. And in fact, you can show mathematically, but this is just a, uh, we don't care much about the mathematics, we care more about the physics, okay? And it's zero only when the two matrix are equal, which means when the symmetry, when the, the original matrix was already got diagonal, which means was symmetric, okay? Okay, and so this this quantity, it's a quantity that tell us how much asymmetry is broken. Okay, and only require the very important uh, thing is that only require the knowledge of the density matrix at a given in a given state. Okay, it's not a measure like of distance between two different states, like in one, for example, using the experiment with colloidal particle. Just you, you have one density matrix, and for one density matrix, which has this structure, you can define this uh, uh, entanglement asymmetry. Okay? And this entanglement asymmetry will be the crucial quantity that we will discuss in this uh, talk. Is it clear to everybody? Okay, how we can compute this quantity? Okay. It's uh, always the same story. We use, we should introduce a replica tree of the asymmetry. And from a replica tree, we can get the final assumption. The replica tree is very easy. Instead of considering the difference of the von Neumann entropy, one considers the difference of the log of the moments for an integer, okay? And for reason that should be known to the expert, but, and uh, the other can just trust. For any integer, it's easier to assess this quantity exactly like we do with spin glasses, which we, uh, we use uh, an integer. Okay. And uh, then by taking this quantity and taking the limit n that goes to one, one can recover the asymmetry I defined before. Actually, one can prove that also this quantity is positive and it's zero if and only if uh, the symmetry is present. Okay, so in some sense, actually, also the uh, this uh, rainy asymmetry are measure of how much asymmetry is broken, but in a less intuitive way. Okay, now this will be the only technical slide 
if you uh, don't follow this uh, slide, don't worry. I mean, it's, this is mainly for the expert to show how calculation can be done. Okay, but then uh, after I show the, the main uh, formulas, I will not uh, mention them anymore. I will just uh, show results. Okay, so what one should access this quantity for an integer? Recalling that the projector can be written as a Fourier transform of a flux operator, okay, the reduced density, the, this, uh, this projected density matrix can be written as the, uh, an integral of density matrix sandwiched between two flux operator, which are these E to the I alpha QA. Okay, this is quite standard uh, trick for if you ever play with this quantity. Okay, then from this quantity, one should uh, to, to calculate the moment of this quantity for an integer. What one can do is to uh, first of all should make the product of many of this guy. By making the product of many of this guy, one gets a multidimensional integral in which the integrand is an object like this one, which is which uh, we call generalized charge moments in which between two consecutive density matrix, you have the difference of the fluxes, okay, alpha one minus alpha two, alpha two minus alpha three. And you see that it's very important that rho A and QA do not commute because if they commute, all these uh, fluxes will cancel and you will just get trace of rho A to the N. And then when you make the difference between these two guys, you get just zero. So there is no, uh, uh, there is no asymmetry, the symmetry is present. Okay, so this is the crucial object, and this generalized charge moment are the crucial object that we can compute. And it's clear that by definition they are they exist only for integer n. They don't exist for non-integer n. Okay, it's a product of n of these objects. Okay, and that's why we uh, we work in this replica trick formalism. Okay, I hope this is clear to everyone. This is the only technical slide. As I said, if you get got lost in this slide, wake up again because the next slide will be very simple. We start from a, a simple state, a ferromagnet. Okay, all the spin are lined up. Our charge is the rotation around the z-axis. This is the z-axis. Clearly, the state is symmetric. The state. And in fact, if you compute the asymmetry, you just get zero, obviously. Now, let's make a small variation, and we consider a tilted ferromagnet, OK? Which means a ferromagnet not in the quantization direction, say, but in another direction. This state is not any more symmetric. As you see, it's not invariant under rotation on the z-axis, OK? If you compute the asymmetry, it's a quantum mechanic exercise to obtain this formula that is written here, okay, which is better than a formula is a plot. You see that the shape of the, the asymmetry is a monotonic function of the angle up to pi over q when you are aligned, uh, we are perpendicular to the condensation axis, and then again the monotonically decrease to the to pi. Okay, so this is the asymmetry. It, it gives you the intuition that you have a symmetry breaking. More the state is tilted, more the symmetry is broken. Okay, and, but this is quantified by this formula. Okay. Now let's finally go to our approach. Our problem is the following we start at time t equal to zero with this tilted ferromagnet. Which has some asymmetry. Then, for larger time, we let it evolve with the Hamiltonian, which is symmetric uh, with respect to this rotation around the z-axis. And we focus to start with uh, the, the so-called xx chain, okay, which is mappable to free fermion, and for which calculations are easier. Okay, you see that this Hamiltonian commutes with sigma z. Okay, so. For large time, you expect the symmetry to be restored. Okay? 
How you can make the calculation? Okay, it's a lot of algebra. It's very complicated. You get for the charge moment formulas like this one, okay, in which the expert can recognize the quasi, -part the quasi particle picture structure of this character. But okay, this is just algebra, and to show that these charge moments are good, I show some uh, numerical computation. So this is the dots are the numerical computation, and the uh, the lines are the, uh, the formula that I showed before, and these are uh, the start from the charge moment. But what is interesting is the Fourier transform, as I explained before, which give the asymmetry. And these are the final results. Okay, here it's uh, this plot is the most important of the of the talk, likely. Okay, so this is. The, general shape of the asymmetry that we get. So we get that the asymmetry for general n tends to zero for large time, which means that u1 symmetry is restored exactly as expected. And we can also compute how it goes to zero. It goes to zero like one over t q. Okay, so symmetry is restored for large time. Very good. A trivial thing is that larger subsystem, because of this L present here, require more time to recover the symmetry. But a very important feature of this plot here are those crossing. Okay, you see that more the symmetry is initially broken, first it is restored. You see, you start from this, the red car is the one maximally breaking the symmetry, and it's the first one to go to zero. The blue is the intermediate and it goes in the middle, and the green is the one with less symmetry breaking and is the last one to store the symmetry. Forget about this like plot here because it's for another uh, length, so it's not comparable with the other. Okay, so this is what we call the quantum Bemba effect. Okay, the quantum Bemba effect is the feature. That the more the system is initially broken, so more the system is out of equilibrium, and shorter is the time to restore the symmetry, so short time to get to a bit. Okay, so this is completely analogous to the quantum, uh, to a classical case where the band effect is signaled by the crossing of this star. Okay, the, by the way, the band effect here is shown by these plots, but it's also shown by this formula because in this formula, which signal the asymptotic behavior of these cars, which are plotted in this uh, inset here, uh, the asymptotic behavior of this car, the, the decay one over t cubed, the prefactor here, is uh, smaller for uh, when uh, theta is larger. Okay, so. When more the system, uh, the symmetry is broken, smaller is the coefficient of the prefactor of power. Okay, and so the faster the symmetry is restored. So this is shown analytically in the, by this uh, formula. Okay, the natural question at this point that I would expect from the audience is: you made this calculation for a free fermionic system. How you can be sure that this is not uh, just a a consequence of uh, the free fermionic nature of your system. We made some, if you are beyond free fermion, you cannot anymore use free fermionic techniques. You should, uh, uh, sometimes you can use integrability. We are working on that, but we don't have yet the results. What we did is to make some numerical calculation. So we consider always the, the tilted ferromagnet as initial state. But we quench to the Hamiltonian with the uh, with which is symmetrics, which has this very general form. Okay, when J2 is equal to zero, it's just the X and Z integrable spin chain. But when J2 is non-zero, this is a genuine chaotic system which has uh, 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 which thermalize and okay, it's very generic Hamiltonian, it's not particularly special. And here are the numerics done for small system size. Okay, you see n equal to L and with periodic and open boundary condition with and without J2. And okay, you see that in all the cases that we studied, there is the crossing of the cars, okay, before this oscillation, this strange phenomenon that you see here are just finite size effects that kick in. 
but the crossing the BEMB effect happens before the fan size effect kick in. So we can safely conclude that in all these cases, there is BEMB effect. So it's not a, a consequence of uh, being free fermion, it's not uh, being free fermion, but it's general. Quantum BEMB effect is a general phenomenon, at least starting from this state. It's robust against interaction. Okay? Against both interval and non interval interaction. But not only, it's also robust against disorder. Okay, so if we take again the XXX spin chain Hamiltonian and we add a, a quench disorder, we, which uh, a quench, uh, uh, this is a quench chemical potential for the Fermion, it's a quench, um, it's a, uh, a random uh, field in the Z direction, okay, which is the Typical Hamiltonian I use in uh, many body organization studies. Okay, so what we see is that for several parameters, even here, by making the average of the asymmetry over several uh, realization of the disorder, okay, this is for two different uh, interactions. We see in both cases, we observe the crossing of the curve. So, BEM effect is. Uh, Robust also against disorder. Okay, we, we see it very uh, in a very robust way. But you can wonder if it's so stable, things are so good. Is it true also in the experiment? Okay, and uh, for this reason, we contacted uh, uh, the experimentalists in Innsbruck, which are. Um, uh, the group of Christian Ross and uh, Reinhard Blatt, and we collaborated also with the theorists in Innsbruck, like uh, Peter Zoller, Benoit Vermesh. Okay, so what, what is the experiment they have in, here in Innsbruck? It's uh, uh, a trap consisting of uh, uh, some uh, 20, 30 ions of calcium, each of which encodes a qubit, which means also a spin, that can be individually manipulated. And so what they can do in the experiment is to prepare the system in a fifth thermonetic state, exactly within our theory. And then they quench this Hamiltonian that is in state wrong range. Okay, this is ions interact with the log, there is some thinning, there is a lot of things, but the final Hamiltonian of the ion is uh, long range and the uh, it's, uh, it decays with the power of alpha in the strength of interaction, which is equal to more or less 1.24. Okay, and if you are interested, the coupling here is uh, uh, of the order of the millisecond, as you see from this uh, formula, while the defacing that is present of the, in the system is of the order of the second, which means you, uh, the kind of region is almost unitary. Now to access. Uh, uh, entanglement asymmetry with this uh, in this kind of system is really a magic. It's done with what is known uh, as randomized measurement, okay, and then estimating the asymmetry through classical shadow formalism, which is something extremely complicated and uh, that technically doesn't. Uh, uh, there is no time in this colloquium, and maybe even a full colloquium. Actually, there was some time ago a colloquium by Zoller in SIFS where he explained exactly these kind of things, but probably he was focusing more on the result than on the on the technique itself. Okay, but this is the just for the uh, to be clear. This is the kind of techniques that we use to make the the measurement. And then, okay, the experimentalist, in particular, Josh Manoy, here that made most of the measurement. Uh, what it, uh, they did. First of all, they studied the initial state and they studied the theta dependence on the initial state with 12 ions. Okay, you see here the experimental data that are these, uh, these symbols, which are contrasted with theoretical prediction, which are the full line. And you see that in the initial state, the initial state is prepared with, uh, with quite a lot of They are perfect in agreement, showing that the, this measurement of initial state is important to be sure that the initial state is what we want. Okay, a tilted ferromagnet with the right asymmetry. Okay, then we let it evolve and we measure the asymmetry in time. These are the results of the experiment. Okay, the, the, 
those symbols are the, the result of the experiment. The lines are the theory where we put uh, the long range Hamiltonian, the, the phasing, and all possible effect. You see the agreement between theory and experiment is spectacular. They are basically inciting. But the most important thing that both theory and experiment for this long range Hamiltonian with all the, the, the phasing and all the features of the experiments, they cross. Okay? And there is a very clear signature of quantum band effect. The more the system is out of equilibrium at the beginning, the fastest the equilibrium is recovered. Okay? So uh, I hope you are, if there are questions about this, okay, the, this is probably the most important uh, slide of this talk, okay, which shows uh, what is the better effect, that the more the symmetry is easily broken, the faster it's recovered, which is the more system is out of equilibrium, the faster it recovers to equilibrium, okay? And this is not only a, a theory speculation, but it's seen in a, an actual experiment in ion trap setup. Okay. This being said, one can now, since there is the phasing, one uh, can be curious about what is the effect of the phasing. Does the phasing make better than the effect or make it worse? Okay, so these are the experimental conditions, more or less, in which. So in all this plot, the full lines are the unitary evolution, while the dash are the one with some defacing, with normal defacing of the order of one second. Okay, what you get here, from one second minus one, sorry. Uh, what you get is that basically the results are indistinguishable from the, uh, for short time are indistinguishable from the, uh, the unitary dynamics and there isn't very bad like in the unitary case. Instead, when you increase the defacing, like to 10 years, uh, you see that uh, now the curve deviates from the unitary dynamics. Okay, you see the dashed line are separated from the full one. Okay, but still they all cross. And the more you increase the defacing, you are at 200, which is really a lot of defacing. Okay, basically it's almost all defacing. You see that the curves are completely away from the unitary dynamics, okay? But they all cross, still continue cross. From BEMB effect is very robust, also against the phasing. Actually, it seems that uh, the phasing makes BEMB even stronger and better, okay? So yes, there is really a perfect crossing of all the cars. Okay, how much time do I have left? 10 minutes. Uh, by the way, what is the organization? Is 50 plus 10? Ricardo, Roberto? Yes, in general, it is this way. I mean, you okay. have... Uh... So I'm more busy. Okay, so what I can do, I can uh, uh, skip this part on the non similar restoration. Okay. Uh, I can show you about... Uh, a last example, when we make something completely different, just to show, we start from the ground state of this Hamiltonian, which has some asymmetry explicitly in, in this, uh, in the presence of this uh, non-symmetric term in the Hamiltonian, gamma, okay, so the largest gamma, the more the symmetry is broken, and then we let it evolve with the asymmetric Hamiltonian, okay, and uh, 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 what we observe is that even in this case, the curve crosses, and uh, so there is band effect also in this case. Okay, this is the last uh, slide. To conclude, what is the message of this? So we introduce a new experimentally accessible quantity, which we call entanglement asymmetry, which measures uh, the symmetry breaking. And this quantity allowed us to discover a new and unexpected phenomenon, which we, uh, which by similar, for similarity with the classical case, we call the quantum Bemba effect. What I showed here is just a bit uh, the tip of the iceberg. There is uh, uh, 
Jaz per no vjasno. There is still a lot to be done. Okay, for example, understanding the tangle asymmetry in ground state, the breaking of Martinian symmetry, uh, random unitization in what for integrable models. So these are all sort of technical questions, but the real question, which can be understood by everyone, and this that uh, for me is the main question in this field now, is to understand what are the conditions to have quantum band effect. Okay, and this can be understood only uh, if we understand if there is a, uh, an underlying physical mechanism behind this quantum band effect. Okay, and this is not yet known. For the moment, we observe it, both theoretically and experimentally, uh, but we don't have a, um, a complete uh, knowledge of an underlying physical mechanism. And I would say that the same is true also for the one, the classical. And I will stop here and I will have time for uh, questions. I'm in time, no? Ricardo, will you read the question or uh, give the permission to people to? Giving the permission. So, for example, uh, uh, Gabor can speak. Uh, also, Jacopo now. Yes, thank you. So, uh, very nice work, Pascal. One thing that I noticed is that you, when you measure the distance from the equilibrium, you are choosing a particular measure, right? This entangular symmetry. Yes. The question, is the effect generic in the sense that you can choose another measure of the distance of the equilibrium and you see the same? I would suspect yes, but maybe this universality can also hint at some sort of mechanism if you look for other distance measures on equilibrium. Uh, we are working on that, Gabor. Thank you for the question. We are working on that. Uh, like the natural measure that we have in mind is the distance between the uh, the reduced density matrix and reduced density matrix in the equilibrium state. Exactly. This, exactly. I, but okay, uh, this is very interesting. We are working on that, but this is only theory object because it requires to define the difference of two density matrix. Okay, and this is not acceptable in the effect. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Uh, I expect exactly as you said to see exactly the same phenomenology, but this is a, a theory. It, it will become a theory game, not accessible in experiment. Yeah, thank you. Question. Thank you, Pasquale, for the uh, really nice talks. I have just a curiosity, maybe it's a naive curiosity. Uh, is it possible to extend or generalize this uh, uh, quantum vampa uh, um, effect to open quantum system? Maybe it's, do you see something about that? Uh, I don't know. I see the, the slides uh, related to the defacing. Maybe uh, I see that uh, in quant open quantum system can be also a similar effect. Yeah, I think yes, the answer is yes. The facing is one step forward. Actually, Michele Fab my colleague Michele Fabrizio wrote me today an email where in some open quantum system he observed a, a similar mechanism with different quantities from studying the magnetization in, a, in an open quantum system. Okay, so in general, yes, the answer is uh, I would expect it, it is possible to study in open quantum system and it, it must be studied in open quantum system. Then when you will have quantum band effect and when things will just uh, be normal, I don't know, a priori, okay? Like if you make an open quantum system where the relaxation is quasi stationary, obviously you don't have band effect. But there is all uh, uh, many other situations in which I would expect to observe in band effect. Okay, but thank you very much. Uh, I have a question for Pasquale, if you am allowed to, 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 to address a question. Yes, uh, go on. Um, 
Well, you mentioned at the beginning of your seminar that uh, in the um, uh, classical case, the experimental setup allows you to observe this MEMPA effect, but sometimes the MEMPA effect doesn't show up. Have you any uh, scenario like that in the quantum case? Because all the cases you mentioned seems to uh, stress, point out, up to that this effect is there in the quantum system that you have been analyzing either numerically or experimentally. So that could give you some hint about uh, the last question, which is probably, as you may say, the most important, how to understand, understand the general mechanism, physical mechanism behind that. Yeah, okay, we studied many states that I didn't show, okay, and in... Uh... In some cases, um, BEM effect is not clear or probably is not there. So we have some states where it's not there, but the phenomenon, the, the logic, uh, there is not a simple uh, uh, criterion to distinguish which one are yes and which one are no. Okay, now uh, we are very confused on the generality of the BEM effect, as it is the case for the classical case, let's say. It's after so many years that now people are working on it, uh, a complete understanding is not there, and we are more or less in the same situation. Uh, we have a lot of numerics, and okay, sometimes uh, uh, we observe, so the, 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 the filter ferromagnet as initial state is a very robust state, and whatever you do, you observe MEMBA, but if you start from other states, uh, uh, it happens many times you observe, but sometimes you don't. Okay, so, uh, and we don't understand the rationale in this game. Yeah, well, if you allow to me a comment, I think that you are really facing a challenging problem because uh, uh, trying to understand how the, how the relaxation dynamics in these situations works is very tough problem. I think it's very interesting on itself, but uh, it's really very hard to face with this with this such, such a kind of problems as usual. So because many mechanisms may enter the, the game, even at classical and or at quantum level. So I mean, good luck. <laughs> it's a nice problem. Okay, but we should try. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, you have to. But we should try. There were more raised then. Now there is a, a question in the question and answer box, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's related to the one you already asked, answered, but uh, is, I, I read. Is there an intuitive explanation for the quantum PEMBA effect? No, okay, that's, the, we, that's what we are missing. I would, uh, there is not an intuitive uh, explanation, as there is not an intuitive explanation for the classical case. Okay, there are some... Uh, uh, complicated thing, but not nothing really intuitive. More questions? There were more raised then, but I don't see any more. It's also quite uh, complicated how water is more symmetric than on the eyes. You are going you're going in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, but okay, the, the, the symmetry for us is mainly a trick to have one quantity that measures the distance. Okay? So it's, in fact, even in, uh, in classical system, there is the reverse band effect that it was in. In the press. Uh, where it is, uh, actually, runs in reverse. Well, it makes the opposite thing. The, the, the real, it was discovered in the freezing of water, but the, uh, but the real, uh, uh, a real uh, definition of the BEM effect is that the more the system is out of equilibrium, the faster it relaxes, independently of the crossing. And for us, the it's a trick uh, to have a quantitative phenomenon without the uh, 
Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yes, bad, but I can hear. Okay, um, I would like just to make a comment uh, about the classical PEMBA effect, which is also related to the first part of the comment of Roberto. In fact, uh, as far as I understand, uh, in uh, water, the statement uh, that uh, hot water uh, froze before uh, is actually neither true nor false in the sense that it depends on the sample because uh, uh, the, the 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 true mechanism for uh, to freeze water is not uh, homogeneous nucleation but it is heterogeneous nucleation so actually in some sample you can observe it and in other sample you cannot and in um, if I can add a, uh, another point uh, is that in, in many homemade experiments, uh, you can observe uh, Mpemba effect simply because uh, the, uh, the container is put on top of ice. And so uh, hot water melts uh, the ice uh, uh, below the container and uh, the liquid uh, favors uh, heat conduction and this is the reason why you can observe it okay uh, thank you but that's exactly why if you can mute because there is a very that's exactly why i start this uh, colloidal system where it's a uh, very complex system. in water too many phenomena are claimed role okay. it, it was the the place where it was originally originally seen and uh, okay it's uh, probably it's still extremely controversial this i agree uh, but like that even in classical system in uh, this colloidal system it's observed and it's undoubted it's there and it's not a a, uh, a fake phenomenon due to uh, 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 things that you said, like... Uh, no, no, sure, I don't claim that the classical PEMBA effect does not exist. I'm saying that in water, I mean, uh, things are complicated in water. I think that water is not... It's an object to have a term, but it's not the... Uh, if you're off one, so, uh, I agree. But, okay. uh, that's exactly why I start from water, but then I need to control settings that you can understand. By the way, uh, even in the classical case, we move back to control settings that are on and not we didn't start very complicated the object of the image would be like. Okay, more questions? Paolo, can you mute because it's really making noise? More questions? Okay, if not, I thank you all and uh, Thanks for the question and see you next call. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice seminar.